What's going on YouTube and welcome back to the channel. I really do hope you guys are well. Today's video is to kind of address some of the comments. Again, a recurring theme on this channel. Comments regarding questing. I'm playing a lot of rings online for the first time or maybe not picked it up for a while. I'm questing, I'm getting loads of experience points, I'm leveling up, but then I start to notice that some of the areas that I've explored before, the quests are greyed out to me. I can no longer get many rewards from them. Are they therefore pointless? Which is a perfectly valid question. And I feel like this is a mentality that a lot of particularly newer players will have. So I guess this video, if you're a veteran player, this is probably not for you right out the gate. But the answer categorically is yes, you, you absolutely need to spend some time doing the side quests. I've made a video about side quests before, but this is probably from a slightly different perspective in the perspective of you being too high a level. The reason why I would suggest doing these side quests is because if you're just focusing on the main and epic story quests, then they take you on a very, very linear path through Middle Earth. And don't get me wrong, some of the sites you see, they are fantastic. They're really, really, you know, intricately placed and well executed. But the side quests, or to correctly name them, the landscape quests, they take you off of the designated path. They take you onto the, the little B tracks and places that you wouldn't normally see. And there's a reason why we're sat in front of the stone trolls now. Of course, they're referenced in the books and in the movies. But these are often sites that you will fail to see if you're just following sort of the main road through to, to Rivendell, through to the gates of Imladris. If you just follow this one linear path, you're not going to really stop off unless the quest takes you in that direction. Now, I do feel there is a quest that will take you this way. I believe that there's a cave actually up here that you need to get to, but it is quite easy to run by. But this is just an example of many of the landmarks and many of the really interesting and intricate pieces of story and world building that is available to you through these side quests. I know a lot of people are gonna be sitting there thinking, I don't really wanna do a quest if I'm not gonna get any experience points or any rewards. There are a lot of cosmetics up for grabs as well. If you are one of those people that like to build out your wardrobe, you like to uh, put some outfits together for your character, you like to grind reputation, um, you know, building up, with different factions, you can still do that through the side quests. And you'll be surprised how many actual areas, not just sort of like off the beaten path areas, but how many actual towns and areas that are introduced to you just through doing the side stories that you don't get any XP reward from. If you are worried about over leveling and you, you are worried about, oh, I don't really wanna do these quests, I'm too high of a level, you can buy an item from the store that will cap your XP and it will stop you leveling. So if you want to complete all of the quests within that area, then move on, then you can do that. I think to further that point, you also get to know a lot of characters and a lot of backstories and their families and the houses they come from and the areas and what you know, different factions and what's gone on in the past and what's going on currently. You learn a lot of that through side story. You know, that that's not just relayed to you in the book quest. The book quests are very much set in stone regarding what the fellowship's doing and that's kind of the story around that whereas the side quests they really do bring out what ssg is able to bring to the table it just just take your time take your time enjoy it don't worry about being too over leveled because you know for example if you're on a legendary server that cap will will you know raise eventually you are unfortunately you're in a game where you are going to level up, you're going to get XP, so just enjoy what's going on around you. Take in the characters, take in the intricately woven story that, that has been put together over a mass of 17 years. You know, th this isn't stuff that's been, I don't know, popped into a random word generator and then just displayed into a game. This has been written by people, tangible, actual people. And I can honestly say I, I can't imagine they would love anything more and for people to enjoy what they've put in front of them, not just, you know, the main show, the main event. So yeah, don't, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to do side quests. They are so, so important. Some of the side quests in this game are actually some of my favourite moments, truthfully, of Lord of the Rings Online. Yes, the epic book quests are fantastic, but there are so many hidden gems. Even if you're just doing something silly, like looking for hidden caves behind waterfalls and little trinkets just kind of like dotted about or boots that are buried in the sand. Like there are so many fond memories that I've got just from side quests and it certainly leaves a smile on my face when I'm kind of running around doing things and I, what I tend to do is I'll focus on the more kind of like meaty stuff like I don't know if I'm 
doing my dailies or if I'm um, finishing off some epic book quests. And then when things start to get slightly tedious, if you like, or slightly wearing, then jump into some of the quests that are less rewarding EXP wise, because I promise you they'll be just as rewarding in story and well building for you. Hopefully in some ways this video kind of helps you look at side quests a little bit differently. I completely understand that it's hard to want to do these things that take time without any form of actual tangible progression but trust me it's, it's definitely definitely worth your time revisit there are so many areas i mean if you look at some of the the map space that we've got here you know you've got even each individual one of these sections here erid lewin the shire evendom for hell i mean for hell is not personally my favorite but there are so many quests in for hell that have you darting about all over the place and learning the the lay of the land just just explore you know sometimes to be honest with you i quite like just getting off my mount and just walking in a direction just to see what quests i can pick up and where things can take me and where i can be led to and what enemies i can discover it's it it really really is one of those games that just requires you to just sit down give it a bit of patience play it because i promise you it will pay off